Welcome back to the Canon booth here at Photokina 2018, where we've taken some refuge from the mayhem of the very busy show floor behind us. And we're here in our media center, lovely elevated position overlooking the excitement of the booth, where I've also found, taking some shelter, David Noten, award-winning travel and landscape photographer and Canon ambassador who's just been speaking on the spotlight stage behind us. David, thank you for taking a bit of time out from your Photokina experience. Pleasure, my pleasure. Now, just been watching your presentation there. Terrific stuff, but I have to say, that screen really makes the most of your panoramic shots, doesn't it? It's incredible. It's incredible. It's so rare to be able to present my own work in such a, a perfect way, so with such a high resolution widescreen. It just, it's, it's a real treat. And I was sat there on the front row, and like you, I felt the need to to the, the compulsion to walk into your uh, really beautiful wide shots and that's something I want to land on first of all with you because those shots many of them weren't taken with a single exposure at all you are a master or, or certainly incredibly adept from where I sit of uh, stitching and stacking that's right I mean I use uh, uh, techniques to merge images together Mer uh, typically, those kind of panoramas we were looking at on the, in that presentation would anything up to 10, sometimes more frames uh, stitched together to make a panorama. And, you know, particularly when it comes to, to travel and landscape, you travel to some amazing parts of the world to capture the images, and we, and we saw quite a few there, including some of the oldest rocks in the world from down under. Yet, the images that seemed to resonate a lot with you and certainly with me were the ones within a couple of miles of your of your home how important is that element of local knowledge to uh, achieving successful results with landscape photography do you think local knowledge is a huge advantage for any landscape photographer because it means you can look at how the light paints paints the landscape and plan to go back and not just go back the next day maybe or the next week but go back the next season when the conditions are absolutely perfect and you can afford to wait for perfection and if it doesn't work you can always try again even if it means waiting until next year. I guess that's the temptation really you buy yourself a new camera book a plane ticket to wherever it is Europe Africa Australasia wherever and you expect to get some great shots straight away but it's not really how it necessarily, it's not the easiest way of doing it. It is investing in the landscape as well as investing in your kit. Uh, great pictures don't happen by accident. It's all about being in the right place at the right time. And that's not easy. In fact, uh, I often think that the, those decisions about where to go and when are the hardest part of the photographic process. So finding a location, coming up with an idea for how to shoot it, uh, it takes time. But when it all comes together, it's, it's just so satisfying. So how do you find your locations then? I mean, you've, you've got a, a ticket to pretty much anywhere in the world if you wanted to go there, I'm sure. So, so how do you make your choices? Do you know, it, it's not rocket science. It's just about putting the boots on and getting out there uh, and using your eyes, using your photographer's vision to come up with a plan and to think about how you can create a picture which is going to sum up your experience of being there. So the photography starts long before you pick up your camera, long before you're even on your way there? Absolutely. The hardest part is done be before the camera back, the camera even comes out of the bag. I speak with a lot of portrait photographers and you know they will talk about how uh, a successful portrait is not only lighting, which is very important to you, and, and composition uh, and creativity, but also about revealing something behind the eyes, telling the story of their subject. When it comes to landscape, what's your, what, what's your approach? Obviously, composition, amazing lighting, fantastic. But what else do you try to do with the images that you capture of landscapes? I think you build up a relationship with a landscape. And again, that that doesn't come immediately. I think that any photographer will, will say that the, the more, the better you know a subject, whether it's sports or landscape or portraiture, or, the better the pictures are going to be. Uh, and the best pictures are all about getting to know your subject and, and again, creating something that is unique to your particular photographic vision. 
of course knowing your subject is key but also knowing the kit that you're using to capture that subject is important let's talk about the EOS R that you've been using over the last few months I saw some of the images in your presentation just now of the burnt British summer how have you found the EOS R to you so far so for a photographer for like me who's been a professional for over 30 years uh, to adapt to uh, working with a mirrorless camera is, is quite a big thing really but I can see that it's the future and I can see that uh, it's going to open up all sorts of opportunities in particular the portability of the new system will be very attractive to landscape photographers we we have to carry far too much equipment uh, over far too many hills often so any any weight saving uh, is is obviously going to be attractive uh, and the foc focusing system in particular I think is a major step forward the ability to select a focus point anywhere in the frame is really really useful and the low light focusing as well I mean I do a lot of uh, work under the night sky when uh, with a traditional uh, DSLR you can't see anything through through the eyepiece at all but with the uh, with the EOS R you can see what you're going to get and you can focus on a tiny pin prick of light with just one tap on the screen that's really quite quite an advantage well, if you want to see some of David's work that he's captured with the ESR and with some of your other uh, EOS kit as well, then uh, make your way over to the Spotlight stage here at the Canon booth at Photokina 2018. You're back on there tomorrow, I believe. Um, but for now, David, thank you very much indeed for your time. Hope you have a great time here at Photokina. Um, and uh, stay tuned. Uh, take a look at the Canon Events Twitter page. We'll be uh, live streaming here, also on Facebook as well. Stay tuned. We'll see you later.